Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to make an anniversary card using these dies. I've got an aperture die, a ferny frondy die, a leafy die, a butterfly die and a little polaroid frame. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to use that but I've got it out so I'm going to have a think as we move along. Before we get into the card making though, just wanted to say stick around to the end of the video and I will share with you how I store my dies. I've had a few questions recently about die storage so I thought I'd pop it at the end of this video. First thing I'm going to do today is cut my aperture out of this bit of cardstock. It is hammered white cardstock. It's just over four inches, just under six inches high. So to line up my aperture die, I've got my scoreboard, my bit of card, one of these corner positioners and my aperture. And I'm just going to push that into the corner there, add a bit of tape and run that through my die cutting machine. Okay, that's all cut out. Now to make something pretty to go behind the aperture. I've got another piece here of hammered white cardstock and I'm going to use Victorian Velvet Distress Oxide. It's a really lovely muted pink. It reminds me of Potter's Pink, the watercolor. And I think I'm just gonna do a bit of swiping. Nothing fancy. Just bring out the texture of the card. Grab a brush, go over it a little bit to spread it out a bit, blend it out a bit. So that's quite nice already. Just that variation with a bit of direction. But I'm not going to leave it there because I never do. I'm going to use this stamp. This is a very old silicon stamp I got from a craft shop in Swanage, I think, when I was on holiday one year. But it's one of my favourite mixed media stamps. I do love circles and I do love a bit of grunge. Just going to do some tone on tone stamping for a little bit of texture. Rotate it slightly so it's not always in the same orientation. I rather like that, that looks good in there. Before I go any further though, I'm going to spatter on a bit of water to lift a little bit of colour off here and there. Just roll my paper towel over to pick that up and there's a little bit of bleaching there. I'll dry that with my hair dryer. And I've got a bit of this pixie dust mica powder in rich gold and I'm going to splatter that on for some sparkle and shine. Oh, she says blowing it all the way across. I always find it a good idea to put the water down first before you put the powder in because then the powder won't blow away so do it like that <laughs> this is one of those do as I say don't do as I do situations okay that's a nice rich gold so we'll spatter that on so to add a little bit of texture I've got this embossing powder charity shop find I'm thinking this might have come off the front of a magazine at some point. I seem to remember it being part of a magazine bundle, but that's all I really know about it. And I'm gonna just give it a little bit of floral embossing. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's got some lovely texture now. So I think we'll add that there with a bit of craft foam to separate the layers. Before I stick this down, I want to chop off a bit of the background so that I've got some to cut my butterfly from. Okay. 
and I'm going to add a bit of card here so that it's all level at the back. Okay, so that's the front done. You can actually pop that on the card blank. So the card blank is hammered white cardstock. It's four and a half wide by six and a quarter high. And I shall use my ATG to stick that down. All right, so that's the card base done. Now I've cut a fern out of white cardstock and a Polaroid and a leafy thing. I think the Polaroid might just be, it's not a Polaroid is it, it's a sort of film bit, might just be confusing matters a bit. So I've got a bit of this to cut my butterfly from. Some of it's embossed, some of it isn't, but as it runs through the die cutting machine, the embossing will get squished. I'm going to pop some double sided on the back so my butterfly comes out sticky. It's lost one of his antenna, but uh, we can uh, fix that later. In fact, what I'll do is I'll snip both of his antenna off and then we can uh, remedy that. I'm just going to sit this on the release paper here, the back of the release paper. Can I stick him on the front? I think I'll stick him on the front actually, because then I know he'll definitely come off again. I've got a bit of gilding wax here. Some gold. It's not quite the same actually. Let me have a look. I've got this coppery one, which might be a bit closer to the cosmic shimmer that I added. Just go around him to give him a bit more shimmer and shine. Here and there. There we go, looks good now I think. I'll just buff him off with a bit of dry tissue paper. Bring out that shine from the gilding wax. And stick him on a bit of vellum and go around the edges of his wings with my detail scissors just so all the little holes have got a bit of vellum behind them give him a little bit more solidity help him stand off the card a bit just give my butterfly back his body and his antenna I've got this little butterfly body die It's a little bit of a different style. It's a bit more, I don't know, cartoony, but I think it'll do. I think we stick him on there like that and add a bit of something to him. Just to marry it all together, I think that'll be fine. So we'll dip him in a bit of glue and add him. Yeah, he's fine. There we go. For my sentiment, I used my typewriter to type happy anniversary on some of the hammered white cardstock. And then I used, where's it gone? A stitched banner die to cut that out. I'm just wondering if we need something a little bit more solid here. I don't think we do. I think it actually it all looks okay. I don't think it's too busy with the leaves, leaves rather. I think the vellum on the butterfly wings actually is enough. Yes. Right, let's stick this down. To give my butterfly body a bit of dimension, so it's not just a flat 
bit of card. I'm going to go over it with glossy accents. That will allow the, the colour to show through, but it will give it a little bit of dimension. And for finishing touches, I'm thinking these little pearls, flat back pearls. Just to flutter up the page along with the butterfly. Right, that's finished. I'm pleased with the way that turned out. I do love that Victorian velvet colour. It's a beautiful dusky pink. Don't go away just yet because as promised, here is a look at how I store my dies. So I have all my dies on magnetic sheets of one type or another in a bin on one of my craft trolleys. That way they're really accessible and I can lay my hands on them whenever I want. I find if I don't have my tools and media to hand, then I don't use them. So everything in my craft room needs to be easily accessible. So that's how I store the sheets of dies. I'll talk you through my system of organising my dies. So I used to use these art bins to store my dies in and they were great until my collection grew out of them really. They became a bit cumbersome to constantly open and flick through to find what I wanted. And also they're incredibly heavy and they were getting more and more expensive to buy. So although I've still got these plastic tubs, I don't use them except for my alphabet dies and my number dies and my Christmas dies. So I've got one of these dedicated to Christmas dies that I only get out to make Christmas cards. So they're safely stored away for most of the year. But as I say, this one is for my alpha dies and my number dies. And I have them organised like this. Uh, just, ooh, that is the reason. <laughs> That's the exact reason why I keep them in here. Because I'm worried that I'll lose them if I don't have them securely kept in a box so my alphabet dies and my number dies all go in here and I'll have to remember to pick that one up before I put it away and then I have the dies that are sitting in the bin and some of them are on these simply because I've got lots of them and I keep like with like so I put my uh, sentiment dies that have shadows on this one so there are a couple of different brands here this is another example where I've got all my banner type dies with a few tags mixed in on this one. So if I want a banner, I know where to go. This one has all my cameras and photo frames on it. So that's like with like. As I said in the previous video, I don't tend to keep things according to manufacturer. I keep things according to type because that's the way my brain works. I think, oh, I'm going to use cameras today and I will grab this and use all my different camera dies however I'm planning on using them. This is an example of a leaf sheet. So I've got some leaves, there are a few flowers mixed in, but that's okay because leaves and flowers go together. I've got loads of different leaf sheets, loads of different flower sheets. And to make these, all I do is I buy these, uh, they're not A4, I think they might be, not sure if they're US letter size or something like that. But I buy these self-adhesive magnetic sheets, stick them onto some kind of thick card, bit cardboard, chipboard, and then they stand up really well in my bin and I can just flick through them. And they all just sit here like this. Every so often I have a little tidy, make sure everything's back in the right place. And whenever I want anything, I think, oh, flowers today, I go to the flower sheet. Or if I want butterflies, I go to the butterfly sheet. And just all my aperture dies are together. Rectangle dies, circle dies, strip dies, more flowers, circly shapes. And there we go. So that's a quick flick through of what I've got in my die bin. And that's how I store my dies. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of what you can do with the dies and bits and bobs in your stash. If it has, do leave a thumbs up and a comment. Don't forget, you can come and join my Facebook group if you like. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.